Hey medicals, today we are discussing a topic which is very important to know as a doctor that is kidney stone. Kidney stones are small hard or soft deposits of minerals and acid salts on the inner surface of the kidney, right? It may be one of your family member or relative can suffering from this condition. So what are the causes that can form kidney stones? So the first one is urine stasis. It can be due to highly concentrated urine. It might be due to the imbalance of pH in urine. Like it can be acidic or alkaline. Acidic pH can form uric and cysteine stone. While alkaline pH can lead to the formation of calcium stone. The conditions like gout, hyperparathyroidism, hypoparathyroidism, inflammatory bowel disease, urinary tract infection can lead to the formation of kidney stones. Drugs like Lexix and Topamax can be involved. Let's talk about types of stones. Stones are classified on the basis of their location in the urinary system and their composition of the crystals. So the first one is calcium oxalate. It is a most common type of stone. It is due to the defective handling of calcium. Look over here, these are the envelopes, right? And in microscopic examination, the stones are just appear like this. So in microscopic examination, the shape of these crystals just like envelope. Treatment is specific for different types of stones. We will going to discuss the treatment after discussing all types of stones. So the second one is triple phosphate stones, which is formed due to magnesium ammonium phosphate. How it is formed? So there is an infection due to the bacteria named as Proteus mirabilis, which is urea positive bacteria. This bacteria split up the urea into ammonia. So that's why there is an increase in production of ammonia, which is the reason behind alkaline medium of the urine. And the precipitation of this ammonia lead to the formation of magnesium ammonium phosphate. And in microscopic examination, if we examine the stone, then it just like the coffin lid. So in microscopic examination, there is a coffin lid appearance. The third one is calcium phosphate stone. These stones are seen in conditions like hyperparathyroidism or hypoparathyroidism. We are going to treat this condition according to the formation of the stones. Now look over here. This is the microscopic examination. So how it appear? Yes, it's appear like the rosette. So in microscopic examination, rosette set. Fourth one is urate stone and these urate stones are very specific because these stones are radiolucent and these stones are generally seen in chronic gout. And note that it is one of the softest kidney stone. This stone is radiolucent. What is radiolucent? Radiolucent means transparent to the X-ray. So these stones are radiolucent, right? In microscopic examination, there is no particular shape of these crystals. But we have taste to identify the stones. Generally, it is seen in chronic gout. So we have taste 20 per hour urinary acid excretion. So patient might be over producer of urinary uric acid or he might be under excretor. So we are going to treat according this. The fifth one is cysteine stone which are made up of cysteine and generally seen with the diseases like cystinosis and cystinuria. These both are different right? Cystinosis is a disease of cysteine storage in which the kidney is initial but the sole target organ. While in cystinuria, it is the disease of renal tubular cystine transport in which excessive loss of the insoluble amino acid causes precipitation at physiologic urine pH and concentration. This is the microscopic examination and look over here, these crystals are just appear like the hexagon. So in microscopic examination, we can write here, the stones are just like hexagonal in shape. The sixth stone and last stone that we are going to study and which is important that is Janthin stone which are made up of Janthin and these are also radiolucent in nature just like the urate stone. Janthinuria it is also known as Janthin oxidase deficiency 
is a rare genetic disorder causing accumulation of xanthine. Basically, hypoxanthine is oxidized to xanthine and xanthine is oxidized to uric acid. And this oxidation is caused due to the xanthine oxidase. And due to the deficiency of this xanthine oxidase, there is an accumulation of xanthine. So in microscopic examination, there is a no particular shape. So we have two radiolation stones, urate stones and xanthine stone, right? So this is a soap, Lux, and one can remember it, these two radiolution stones, Lucent, Radiolucent and U means urea stone and X for xanthine stone. Now we are going to look out the clinical features. Clinical features like flank pain, renal colic. This flank pain can be radiate to umbilicus. In male, it can radiate to tip of penis or in female, it can radiate to the uvula. There might be omitting due to renogastric reflex and hematuria. These three are very significant clinical features in this condition. What do you think about investigations? You might be thinking of EVSG, but the best investigation of choice is non-contrast CT abdomen for both renal stone and the ureteric stones. We can do the kidney function test and urine macroscopic examination to identify shape of these crystals. Moving toward treatment, so first we discuss about calcium oxalate stones in which there is a defective handling of calcium so we can treat it by giving thiazide which decrease the urine calcium excretion and we can also suggest normal calcium diet to the patient. Second one is triple phosphate stone. So this is occur due to the bacteria that is Proteus mirabilis. So we can give antibiotics to the patient. The third one is calcium phosphate stone. And it is seen in hyperparathyroidism and hypoparathyroidism. So hyperparathyroidism, it is mainly due to parathyroid adenoma. So we can do the surgical resection. And if the patient having hyperparathyroidism, then we can treat it by giving injection teriparatide. The fourth one is urate stone, which is radiolution, right? So, so there might be the overproducer or under excretor of uric acid. If the patient is overproducer, we can give allopurinol. While if he is under excretor, then we can give probensid. Next one is cysteine stone. And cysteine stone, which is seen in cystinuria and cystinosis, so we can treat it by giving d penicillamine. Also, for xanthine, we can treat it by giving d penicillamine. So these are the medical management of this condition. What is the surgical management? Yes, if renal stone is less than 2 cm, then we can do extracorporeal shock wave lithiotripsy, which is contraindicated in the conditions like pregnancy and bleeding diastasis. While if renal stone is more than 2 cm, then we can do percutaneous nephrolithiotomy. So this is the information regarding kidney stone. So before we going to end this lecture, I would like to ask a question that is which urine crystals are shown in the figure below. Take a look on it. The options are calcium oxalate, uric acid, calcium phosphate or cysteine. Yes, the answer is A that is calcium oxalate. Don't forget that in triple phosphate there is a coffin lid appearance of the stones. In cysteine, there is a hexagonal crystals and in calcium phosphate stone which are appear like rosette in shape. So these are some images which can be asked in your exams as a image based questions. I would like to ask one more question. What is the investigation of choice of the ureteric stones? And the options are CT scan, USG, MIBG scan or DMSC scan. Yes, the right answer is CT scan. All of the routine methods have become less useful with the advent of more sensitive and specific non-enhanced computed tomography scanning.
that is ct scan for both renal and ureteric stone thank you so much for your patience and listening me out thank you